You may have heard of free solo climbing. If not, don't be concerned. We've got you covered. You guys should at least be aware that it is the riskiest type of climbing because there is virtually no safety net in place in case of a fall. In today's video, we'll talk about free solo climbing. And who did it first? The term free soloing is typically used to describe technical rock climbing that requires only hands and feet, along with a chalk bag and a pair of climbing shoes. But it can also refer to ice climbing and ropeless routes in the Alps and greater ranges. Soloing can also refer to traveling alone while holding a rope, but free soloing amidst the rope. Climbing free solo is the riskiest type of climbing because, unlike bouldering, free soloists ascend to higher altitudes where a fall is almost certain to be fatal. Free soloing is seen as a niche of a niche, reserved for the sport's elite, despite the fact that many climbers have attempted it. This has led to many practitioners becoming celebrities in both the rock climbing community and the media. The phrase free solo was once only used by climbers, but Merriam-Webster added it to their English lexicon in September 2019 as a result of the Oscar-winning movie Free Solo Success. Free soloing is just one part of the climber's mosaic of climbing experiences and accomplishments. The majority of the practice is limited to climbs the climber is already familiar with and whose difficulty is well within their range of proficiency. However, there are always innate risks, like like falling rocks or abrupt weather changes. Famous climbers like John Bacar, Derek Harrisay, Vic Hendrickson, Robert Steele, Dwight Bishop, Jimmy Ray Forrester, Jimmy Jewell, Tony Wilmot, and John Taylor have perished while free soloing. In 1986, John Bacar and Peter Croft, both well-known soloists, became the first people to successfully climb roped belt El Capitan and a half dome in a single day. Each of them regarded this achievement as a major career high point. Before John Bacar made headlines by free soloing the tree roots that make up the 450-foot Nebasco wall, 5.11 centimeters in Yosemite in 1979, there was another achievement that was equally impressive for its time, accomplished by Henry Barber of New Hampshire. The 19-year-old Barber completed the 1,500-foot Stex Selath IV 5.9 on Sentinel Rock in 2.5 hours while on a trip to Yosemite in 1973. This was the first time he had done it. For a 1976 episode of American Sportsman, Barber, then 22 years old, soloed the Strand, a sustained E25B, 5.10, with the trickiest movements on top at Gogarth Anglice Island, North Wales. He warmed up for that ascent by soloing the close-by route Central Park, where a seagull swooped down and stole his hat. My solo career doesn't remotely figure in today's world, Barber says today. Nevertheless, he soloed countless routes, including the first ascent of Free Korea Park in Kyrgyzstan and the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, as well as the Shawaguk Mountains in New York, the Arab Piles in Australia, and Dresden in East Germany. When I went through all my records, it turns out my soloing was 87% on site, he says. Jim Erickson, who is credited with roughly 100 El Dorado Canyon first ascents, on site free soloed the Two Pitch Blind Faith 5.10a route on the west face of the Bastille in 1972. Such first ascents were numerous for Ericsson, who is renowned for being silent about them. He is also one of a very small number of people to fall alone and survive, breaking both of his legs in the process. He started ascending again. Additionally, Ericsson served on the FA of the renowned 5.11, the Naked Edge, as described as perhaps the boldest solo of the 1970s in Yosemite climbs by George Myers and Don Reed. Charlie Fowler free soloed the 19-pitch direct North Buttress 5.10 of Middle Cathedral in 1977. In addition to soloing the 1,500-foot The Flakes in the Black Canyon of the Gunnison and the three-pitch diving board 5.11a in El Dorado Canyon in Colorado in 1978, Fowler also made the first solo ascent of the remote and intimidating diamond face of Long Peaks via the casual route 5.10a. His solo of the Eiger is cited below. Fowler, a very active climber, vanished in late 2006 on China's Genyan Mountain with his partner Christine Baskoff. They were recognized once their remains were discovered. Numerous well-known athletes who practice the sport have gained notoriety as a result of pictures of them completely exposed and alone on precipitous rock faces. In June 2017, Alex Honnold accomplished what might be the greatest pure rock climbing feat in the history of the sport by becoming the first person to scale Yosemite's 3,000-foot El Capitan wall without the use of ropes or other safety equipment. Prior to Croft and Potter, Honnold was the third person to solo Astroman, where he attempted the harder variants, the rostrum in Yosemite, and the exposed heaven in 2007, 5.12d. 
the 9-pitch Moonlight Buttress 5.12c, described by Mountain Project as perhaps the most magnificent and arguably longest and hardest sandstone climb in the world, was free climbed by Honnold in 2008. He also made his first and not final free solo ascent of Yosemite's Half Dome's regular northwest face, 5.12, also in 2008. El Cap, Half Dome, and Mount Watkins are three of Yosemite's largest faces. In 2012, Honnold soloed all but 500 feet of the 7,000 feet of climbing in under a day to complete the trip. He had previously become the first person to free solo El Cap's 1,500-foot west face, 5.11c, and he and Tommy Caldwell had free climbed the entire triple on difficulties ranging from 5.12 plus to 5.14. Timmy O'Neill and Dean Potter used both free and assistance approaches to first enchain the triple on a single day in 2001. The following climbers are well known for regularly engaging in free solo climbing. Hans Zorgar, John Bacar, Patrick Barhold, Thomas Bobendorfer, Matt Bush, Zaya Cow, Ronaldo Clark, Peter Croft, Steph Davis, Bill Dens, Tim Darrowin, Catherine Destevel, Patrick Edlinger, Jim Erickson, Eric Escoffier, John Fawcett, John Gill, Brad Gobright, Dan Goodwin, Mike Graham, Wolfgang Gulich, Colin Haley, Derek Harrisay, Alex Honnell, Alexander Huber, Jimmy Jewell, Eric Jones, Marc Andre Leclerc, Matt Loy, Dave McLeod, Dan Osman, Dean Potter, Paul Pruess, Andreas Proft, Herbert Ranktoner, Michael Reardon, Jim Reynolds, Aolin Robert, Tobin Sorensen, Will Stanhope, Uli Stack, Slavko Svetik, Miroslav Smeed, Akira Tawara, John Leblonsky, and Mauricio Zanola. Several climbers who have contributed to the practice but only occasionally or infrequently free solo include Pierre Alain, Henry Barber, Lynn Hill, Ron Koch, Jean-Christophe Lafayette, John Long, and Reinhold Messner. Additionally, there aren't many climbers who have experienced free soloing in the 5.14 grade range. The climbers on this list do not employ any padding or spotters, hence there are no highball boulder ascents on this list. There is some discussion regarding the hazy distinction between highball bouldering and brief free solo climbs. By climbing the 15 meters, 49 feet, Panamex Arnesensis at Miro di Pizzara near Arco in Italy in December 2019, Little-known non-professional Italian climber Alfredo Weber, who was 52 at the time, became the first person to free solo at Grade 8 C, 5.14 B. Alexander Huber's 2004 ascent at Communist and Dave McLeod's 2008 climb of Darwin Dixit, both of which were at a grade of 8 B+, are two other significant free solos that pushed the technical grade of what was possible, 5.14 A. Only a small percentage of climbers solo. Most do not engage in this exceedingly risky activity. In some ways, moving unroped at the bottom or top of a route was more common, though less well known, in the past, and some traditional climbers still do. Many seasoned climbers have dabbled in soloing for short periods of time out of convenience, such when a companion wasn't available, and then stopped. Hope this video added some value to your knowledge and thoughts. Do share your views in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so and hit the notification bell. See you in the next video.